Hey, yo, this is um, Firefighter Tiger, co host of the Public Safety Future Responders, with co host Firefighter Ringback. Um, and on this episode, episode three of the podcast main series, we will be discussing the role of the Emergency Operations Center and those good folks out there in those centers who are really good people to help in the emergency situation when disaster strikes. Those are the folks that you need to call on for help and everything. So, yeah. So, pretty much, let's actually, before we get into the roles of the function, let's actually talk about the Emergency Operations Center. An Emergency Operations Center is responsible for strategic directions and operation decisions and does not normally direct control field. Basically, what it comes down to the fact of is the emergency management um, centers basically deal with doing the emergency operation work and being there to help the boots on the ground in the disaster zone with logistics and the paperwork and safety and overall guidance that normally will f does not really affect the field operations but be able to say, hey, um, we, we identified some safety concerns that we need you to be aware of, or we got, or in the logistics side of the emergency operations center, it's basically, we can get you those trucks for that. Oh, you need 50 trucks? Yep, we'll get you, we'll get on to that for you right now. Uh, our common examples of two functions of the emergency operations center. Um, along, with the, along with logistics and safety, you also got your public information officers, so that collects information and and schedules interviews and the point the public information officer for an emergency operations center is the first point of contact for really mostly for the media because they're the ones who the public information officers are the ones that make the bullet points and make the notes for the incident commander to talk about when he gets interviewed because we got to take the information we gather summarize it and distinguish the fact of okay this is the information I got to go out to the boots on the ground and then this is the information we could tell to the public while kind of maintaining a little bit of a little bit of a security net because of most information that can't be shared with the public but is sh but can be shared with the boots on the ground is crucial for the need and that's where the public information officer comes really into play for the emergency operations center um so then you got so then yeah and then your safety oversees all your safety problems logistics oversee all the logistical incident and then you got your incident commander who in turn has the deputy commander pretty much in the emergency operations center it's the same incident command structure that is also used on um in the fire service and in law enforcement because pretty much between the emergency operations center network and law enforcement and the fire service all really rely on the same system except just three different usage of that system um, so yeah, but like it is, with emergency operations, these are the folks that, when disaster strikes, respond to the center, open it up, assign the roles, and get right to work to provide and collect the data and information that can then be distinguished between, okay, well, we need this information to go out to the boots on the ground, but this, this information can be sorted for, for the public's knowledge, and that's really what an emergency operations center is all about pretty much folks here um but yeah like and here's actually a true example is actually when i was a sophomore in high school at a trade high school here in the state of connecticut get to the fact of i've actually done positions where in my in my shop um we've actually had an educational um version of the emergency operations center where we actually got to actually utilize it and as we develop the skills that we need to basically work in an emergency operations center. Um, we've took the, the um, incident command structure and the certifications that are needed to work in the emergency operations center. And actually, we've over pretty much lately, we've done, we've had numerous instances where it was activated. Um, one incident, um, I can actually say the fact of, is um, we've, what we thought was going to be activated for mostly like natural disasters actually got activated um, before I graduated for the COVID-19, for the coronavirus that we just recently had that thankfully were over. So yay, thank God for that. So we don't have to have to worry about that. We technically still do, but not as much. But yeah, but like it is, like the emergency operations centers, they get activated for really when disaster strikes. Like they get activated for wildfires, hurricanes, when really a disaster is identified and an emergency management team is needed. Those are the people that go into the centers and say, "Let's get to work. This is the this is what we're dealing with, folks. Here, what, this is what we got to do. These are the people on the ground. What can we do to help?" Kind of thing, and yeah. 
So with that, um, I'm going to wrap that up because really there's not really that too much to really talk about with emergency management. But really emergency management is another function of the emergency community that a lot of people don't actually realize the fact of when when disaster strikes, not only do you see, not only on the ground you see, yes, you see the first responders and the National Guard and all, mostly agencies, but one group of people that are behind the scenes, working, working behind the scenes, are your emergency operations center people because, like it is, they're the ones that are collecting the information and the data and putting it out there and saying, hey, um, this is the best area for this um, and that. So even though indirectly they're not responsible for field operations, but they kind of advise the decisions of the field operations based on the data that has been collected and gathered and filtered for the boots on the ground and for the public to know. So, yeah, this is going to do it for episode three, um, Emergency Operations Center folks' um, description and details. Um, so, yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you do, please hit that like and subscribe button that will be down in the bottom. Um, so, yeah, and then also check us out at the public safety website that will also have the link down below. And I'm hoping that you all enjoy this. Um, we're going to be talking about some more interesting cases um, and that. So, yeah. Um, I'm glad y'all could stick around for episode three. Um, we're really in a good spot right now. Um, I hope we can keep on going with this, and we're going to keep on going. So stick on around, and we got some more information. We got more episodes going to be in the works, and hopefully we will keep this series going. So yeah, y'all have a good one, and I will see you, and I will hear from you on the next one. See y'all on the next one. Have fun and be safe.